You know, and you mentioned that the motorcycle accident was kind of like the, the big blow to the entire territory, but I think a lot of people either don't realize it or overlook it, but the fact that when Kerry came back, he was having his match with you where he actually rebroke the foot, which led to the amputation. So do you remember in that match where he would have gotten hurt, and did you notice that he had gotten hurt again? I did. He told me he was hurt, and uh, we... uh you know, we we tried to, you know, finish it up. It started hurting him and everything. Of course, you know, something like that, something that was that, uh, you know, I mean, it was, a, it was a terrible break in the way they tried to put it on there. It, I, it's probably, you know, they wanted him to get back. He had been, he started training again. But, you know, when you break, when you bones and stuff like that and you reconstruct stuff, it takes a long time to heal, you know. It takes two or three years sometimes for bones to, to heal and, he came back, but you know, he, it, it all worked out. I mean, he's a tough guy, but you still, at when he first came back, he really limped compared to later. You know what I mean? So it, it, it had only been a little over a year. So, you know, 13, 14, maybe 15 months. And, uh, he looked ready, but his, his foot was not ready. You know what I mean? So, so how do you, it, was, it wasn't anything that, I mean, that was, uh, catastrophic to hurt it. We were just doing our regular deal, and, you know, we were just – he was – it's something with me, man. He stepped on it, kind of pushed off, and I heard it pop, Oof. you know. And uh, he goes, ah, I'm hurt, man. He said – and, you know, we we worked around it and finished up the match. But uh, he was in a lot of pain. But he was a tough guy, man. So he, he worked through it. You know, later on got the prosthesis that fit. They basically cut his foot off at the ankle, and then he wore the – prosthesis from his from above his calf basically to his knee down you know below so yeah it's unbelievable uh, especially the fact that you know he was not rushed back but you know he was brought back in an effort to really help with the business overall and obviously it would cost uh cost him on that foot i mean that's unbelievable to think that um but it needed to be done he needed to get in there now how do you work around that and how careful do you have to be because obviously a shattered foot the way it was i mean you the, the lightest touch is going to be an ache it's going to be a pain so how do you kind of work around that especially you know in the middle of a match well as a heel you want to act like you're wanting to hurt him you know what i mean but uh there's a way to do everything and without without jumping up and down on it you know I can I can make it look like I'm I'm hurting him, but the the funny thing is, I would basically go for the foot and he would kick me off. I never really ever went to work on it per se because I didn't want to take the chance of hurting him. And then he, like I said, just an inadvertent step or whatever it was was what hurt it, you know. So uh, you you had to treat it gingerly. I didn't want to. You know, of course, we grew up together and all that. Even if we wouldn't have, I wouldn't have want somebody. I wouldn't want to hurt him, you know. So, but uh, he looked the part. I mean, come back, he was huge, man. His upper body. I mean, he was just big because he'd started training again, and for a long time before he came back. And he, I mean, he looked as good when he came back as he'd ever looked, you know. So, and later on, you know, when he was in the WWE, dude, he was he was huge. I mean, he was a monster at you know one point. So. Oh my gosh, Unbel unbelievable look, just uh, the absolute uh, top of the heap when it comes to that, and we've said that multiple times, but before I hand it back to John here, I just want to ask you about the, kind of the differences in working with Fritz, but also working with a Ken Mantell and a Gary Hart. Now, how did you kind of click with them in terms of some of the booking uh, ideas that were going on back then? Well, I, Gary, Gary was the booker when I first broke in and started, and then uh, Ken came in right uh, before I went to Oregon and that's when Dallas really popped here. It's when they really started doing, I think Ken was in a, was in the perfect place at the perfect time. He got a lot of credit for being the booker, but there was a whole bunch of different people making decisions, but, uh, I got along, I got along good with all of them. You know, it, you were a family and it's almost like a corporation, you know, you have a job to do. And when you do your job, correctly everybody succeeds and everybody knew that here you know everybody knew that the von erics were the number one baby faces and 
you had the top heels that they'd come in for a while and they'd work with them. Then they'd go somewhere else and bring a new crew of heels in. And when you were a baby face, you were going to, you were going to be under them. And that was just part of it. But you know, it's like anything else. You accept your role on a football team, in a corporation, anything that has a hierarchy and a structure, you, you've got to become part of that to be successful.